So as, as Brandon said, uh, Pastor Scott will be back next week um, and sharing what he feels God calling us to in 2021 and, and kind of getting out of that holding pattern. And so as, as the three of us talk this week, uh, Pastor Scott, Brandon, and I, uh, we all kind of thought it was ironic that as he was preaching that last weekend of December to get out of this holding pattern and, and start moving forward that we find ourselves in this holding pattern again for about three more weeks with that. But it, it's all in God's timing, right? Um, and so w- with that, um, we talked and, and, and moving forward here, and I, and I have no idea what he's going to be preaching on um, next week and, and going forward for the next, uh, I think, three or four weeks with him. But he wanted me to, to kind of use this as an opportunity to lead into that, talking about um, hearing from God and... Um, being ready to listen for that. So I'm the I'm the setup guy for him. So hopefully I set him up and he can hit a home run next next week. So before I get started, before we dive into the passage here in the in the message, let's let's pray. Father God, um, we are thankful to be in your house this morning. We are thankful that um, you love us, that um, you speak to us, and Lord, we pray that. Um, you would speak through me, that you'd speak through your word, that um, you would open hearts and minds to, to hear what you have to say, and um, that we would be we would be faithful, Lord, that we would we would do our part, that we would we would uh, show our love to you in return, uh, connect with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, I wanted to start off and share a little bit of a little story with you guys, uh, a little personal story. Um, so, over the years. Um, as, as I've grown and matured in my faith, I've, I've been able to kind of cultivate an ear for God and, and God speaking to me. And uh, there's, there's been many times where, where God has spoken to me uh, when I wasn't looking for it. Um, there were many times where I'm sure God spoke to me and I missed it, completely missed it. Uh, and then there were other times when, when I'm sure, uh, or I was um, going to God looking for answers and I wanted them right now. Um, and I wanted a clear-cut answer, and you know, just you know, kind of kind of typical today's society, right? When we got Amazon, we can get something next day, right now. I want it now. Um, and you know, I didn't get the answer right away. I didn't get it when I was looking for it, or you know, maybe I got a, a different answer than than what I anticipated with that. So so recently here, you guys know, um, uh, Pastor Scott approached me about being youth minister here, and, and uh, you know, I, I committed to, to praying about it and seeking God about it. And so um, I, I connect with God really well in nature. And so uh, as I was praying about it, and I, I just needed some time away. So I, I talked, to, talked to my wife, Stephanie, and scheduled a weekend, a weekend camping trip. So I went to a state park uh, down in central Indiana, um, no electricity, just, just a tent. Uh, I did take a blow-up mattress and uh, some food, and it, it was nice. There was no cell phone reception there, so I really couldn't couldn't be bugged. Uh, and I, I just planned on uh, reading, uh, reading my Bible. Planned on on uh, praying. Planned on just being quiet and still before God. Planned on hiking and, and seeking God. God through hiking, uh, and and also eating. So, um, playing that and, and went out and I did that and uh, and uh, you know I so as I was there I, I brought some old journals uh, I looked through my old journal journals to see you know again what God had done in the past um, and, and how He spoke to me in the past and I uh, I brought my my call to ministry that I had and uh, again looked over that a little bit. Um, I read my Bible. Uh, I prayed. Again, I had quiet time and I listened. And as I hike, um, and when I go out on hiking trips, it's it's kind of an open conversation with God, and and I've got just the beauty of His creation around me that that just draws me into a, a point of worship with Him. And, and so I'm 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 walking and I'm talking and I'm and, uh, with God and and just experiencing Him in those ways. Um, and you know, after after that. Did I get my answer? Well, I kind of sort of did. Um, 
I, I didn't get the clear cut yes or no answer that I was looking for. But, but what I did get was I got this overwhelming sense of peace with it. Um, and, that, and that God was saying that it, it's going to be okay uh, just to trust him. Um, and, and so while I didn't get that clear cut yes or no answer that my, my personality, my black and white personality likes, I, I, did, I did sense God's direction. And, and I knew that, that he was leading me back into that and obviously brings me here today with that. So, so that's just kind of one experience that I had with God speaking to me um, with that. So today we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 3 um, as our passage here. And um, this directly follows Judges, a uh, time frame in the Bible. And so, you know, Pastor Scott finished that up uh, several weeks ago. And if you remember, uh, the Israelites at that time were, were not in good spiritual condition. They were, they were idol worship. They were heavily involved in that. They were being influenced by the outside people. They were... Um, they were just a mess, and their leadership wasn't in any better shape either. So Eli, who was the, the priest at this time, the head priest, um, was not leading uh, the, the nation well, was not leading his family well. His sons were, who served underneath him in the temple were, were in a, in a sinful uh, lifestyle, and, and Eli just kind of turned a, a blind eye to that blatant sin that was taking place there. So um, we'll, we'll get into our passage here in 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 7. So now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation, and it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow dim, that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle, of the Lord where the ark of God was and while Samuel was lying down that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here I am so he ran to Eli and said here I am for you called me and he said I did not call you lie down again and he went and lay down then the Lord called yet again Samuel so Samuel rose and went to Eli and said here I am for you called me and he answered I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. So as we see there in chapter one, or in verse one there, that the word of the Lord was rare in those days and there was no widespread revelation. So in that time of, of Judges and this, this beginning part of 1 Samuel, God didn't speak much to the Israelites. Uh, he, he spoke to some individual people there um, and he raised up deliverers to, to physically deliver them from their enemies. But there wasn't a lot of prophetic activity uh, around there with God at that time. So, and, and when God did speak, it wasn't widely known. So we know that like, God spoke to Gideon at that time and, and laid out the plan uh, for, for him to deliver uh, the people there. But again, that was just with God. That wasn't to the, to the whole nation there with that. And so there was this, this time period where it was just relatively quiet and silent from God with that. And so God begins to awaken and uh, begin to, to talk to the Israelites here through, through Samuel, um, and, and we see the beginning of that. And so God called out to Samuel twice, uh, and, and Samuel didn't know it, it was God talking to him. And so Samuel was a young man at this time. He'd been serving underneath Eli um, for, for at least a good 10 years. Um, we know that in, in earlier in 1 Samuel that um, Samuel was dropped off by his mom, Elkanah, and Hannah when he was approximately three years old. And, and now he was a teenager uh, at this time, um, somewhere around the same time that David uh, slayed Goliath. And so um, he had spent this, this 10 years serving there, doing things, um, you know, see, seeing Eli uh, and studying underneath him. But we see here that he really didn't know God. He hadn't experienced God before like that um, in his life. And so he, he knew about God, but he didn't know God. And so just because we live in a Christian environment, grow up in a Christian home, uh, go to church, it doesn't guarantee that we know God. It doesn't guarantee that we have a, a, a very personal relationship, intimate relationship with God. Um, we can know a lot of facts. We can know a lot about things about God, 
and, and see him work in other people's lives, but that can be missing in our own life with that. And so that's a danger that we can face, face here. And so Samuel, uh, being a teenager um, at this point, I think he was coming into his own in the relationship with, with the Lord. And if you've, if you've read the rest of First and Second Samuel or, or heard about Samuel, God did great things through him, and, and this is just the beginning of, of a wonderful story of, of how God worked through him and one of the first of many times that, that God spoke through him. But this brings me to my, to my first point here is that God can speak, but we don't know his voice. And so how can we know God's voice? How, how can we know that it's God speaking to us? <clears throat> and so the first point here is that, is that we can learn from experience. Um, we can learn to know God's from, voice from experience. The more we hear God and experience God, we can cultivate an ear for, for God. Uh, just like I said in, in my story, I've, I've been able to, to know how uh, God has spoken to me and, and places where I connect with God well. Uh, with that, we, we, can, we can learn to experience God, and, and we'll go through, I'll go through later some ways that God can speak to us, some places we can look to hear from God's voice with that. But we can learn from, from our own experience. Jacob, can you go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> And then uh, we can ask God for confirmation if it's, his, if it's him speaking. So just like Gideon, when, when God gave him the instructions um, on, on how to move forward there um, in, in, in slaying the, uh, the enemies of Israel there, um, Gideon asked for confirmation. Gideon asked, you know, I'm sorry, God, you know, please, please help me out here. You know, make, make the fleece wet and the ground dry. And then vice versa. So we can ask for confirmation that, that God is speaking to us. That's, that's one way we can, again, know that God is talking to us here and, and confirm what he's saying to us. Um, we can invite God to, to speak and be faithful to listen. God doesn't force himself on us, uh, just like he doesn't force himself on us for salvation. And sometimes just that act of inviting God to speak to us um, can can open our hearts and open our minds, and it's more about us and not necessarily, you know, letting letting God have the power. He's He's got that power, but it's more about us and, and opening ourselves up to Him with that. And so we need to be ready and 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 willing to listen and look for God to speak. And, and God can speak in in many ways, and so we have to be on the lookout for that. And we may need to to carve out some quiet time and and go to a sacred place for us, or um, where God can speak to us. Uh, and like I said, so I, I connect well with God out in nature. So I try to spend time outdoors, um, in, and it draws me into worship. And, and God speaks a lot of time uh, when I'm there. So it's, it's a thing that I do. And for you, it may be something different. And then uh, lastly there, are there, are there things that are coming up more than once? Um, just like God talked to Samuel and called out to Samuel twice here that we saw in the passage, um, you know, maybe God's trying to get your attention. Maybe you're, you know, again, you're not, not hearing what he says. He's not grabbing your attention. So God can be persistent in that uh, and continue to try and get our attention. And so be on the lookout for, for those patterns um, that, that may develop there as God tries to reach out to us and speak to us. And, and again, maybe we just need to stop and give God time to speak like, like Samuel did. So we're going to move on in our passage here to verses 8 and 9 and, uh, and see what happens next. So the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak. Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. So I'm going to shift gears here a little bit, and we're not going to talk about Samuel here. We're going to talk about Eli a little bit. Now, this is the third time that Samuel has come and approached Eli, um, disturbed his sleep, woke him up late at night in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, and I'm sure he's a, a little irritated, as most of us would be if somebody came and woke us up, and especially three times in a row with that. But, but the fact that it took three times for, for Eli to realize that God was speaking to Samuel, uh, I, I think illustrates where he was at spiritually in his condition. 
and, and his lack of connection with God in that. And though, although God wasn't directly speaking to Eli here, um, I, I think, again, it's his connection is dull, and he doesn't sense that God is trying to speak to Samuel and, and, and work through Samuel and, and sense his presence there. And so that brings me to my second point here, is that God can speak, but we don't hear it. We're clouded. Next slide, please, Jacob. So how can we be clouded? Um, and we, you know, what things can cloud us? But two, two kind of things um, that can cloud us with that. Uh, sin. Sin is the first thing. Uh, sin could cloud our hearing and our relationship with God. Again, Eli was wrapped up in sin. Uh, we'll see that a little bit more as, as we finish out the, the chapter here in a little bit. But his sons were sinning as they were serving underneath him uh, as priests under his watch. Uh, Eli knew about it and did nothing to stop it, did nothing to address it. Uh, Eli himself, uh, again, was wrapped up in sin as well. So when the, when the sacrifice was made, uh, there were certain parts of, of the animal that were dedicated to God, the, the good parts of the meat, you know, the nice tasty parts. And those were supposed to be offered to God. And, and uh, Eli um, and his sons took those good parts and gave God kind of the not so good parts. They took the good parts and they ate them themselves where they were supposed to get the other parts that, that weren't dedicated to God. So this continued to happen over and over. And so as Eli lived in this habitual sin, I, I believe that it, it clouded and damaged his relationship with God. And, and he didn't repent of that. Again, it was habitual lifestyle sin with that. And, and it dulled Eli's senses to what God was doing uh, in Samuel's life. And, and as Eli was approached and, and um, confronted by God and confronted by others with that, he just kind of shrugged his shoulders with that. And well, again, we'll see that here in a little bit. So we need to make sure that if there's sin in our lives, that we repent of that. God is faithful to forgive us uh, of our sin and, and cleanse us of that and restore that relationship uh, with us and, and not allow that to dull our senses and, and to damage our relationship with God and, and, and create a cloud there with that. So, uh, yeah, sin, sin can cloud us with that. Another thing that, that can cloud us is busyness. Um, we, we live in the 21st century where we have all kinds of things that are vying for our attention. Uh, smartphones and, and computers, and we can be uh, available to anybody at any time, anywhere. And the, the, but the busyness itself maybe isn't bad, but the busyness can distract us. The busyness can distract us from hearing from God, and we can lose touch of God when he's speaking because we're, we're constantly being pulled in a million different directions. Um, when we need to focus on God. And, and that busyness can also, again, buy into our, our time with God and, and get into that to where I'm so tired because I had such a hectic day, I'm not going to get up early and I'm not going to read my Bible, I'm not going to do my devotions. Or, you know, I, I'm so so tired, um, I got so much going on that that I need to get up extra early and, and skip that. Uh, again, we, we can replace God with other things in our life. Um, and, and get way too focused on the things of this world and, and, and lose track of what God's trying to do here um, and, and spending time with God. And, and, and so really that, the key to, to hearing God speak, uh, and we'll go back to it over and over again, is, is our relationship with God. And we've got to make sure that our relationship with God is strong and, and busyness can just be one of those things that, that can take us away from God and distract us and pull us away. So those are the, those are the two things that I believe can, can cloud us in hearing from God with that. So let's, let's look at the rest of 1 Samuel chapter 3, finish out, the, uh, finish out the chapter here, and see what God does with Samuel. So now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. In that day, I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because he made his sons, because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. 
And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here I am. And he said, what is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. God do, God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. Then Samuel told him everything and, did, and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. So Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to, Be to Beersheba, knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So again, with that, as I referred to it uh, previously, we see Eli's, as he's confronted, and, and as Samuel tells that vision, as Samuel finally hears from God, that Eli just kind of goes, eh, let God do whatever he wants to do. That's, that's the kind of mental picture I have in, in my head of Eli's reaction to what Samuel told him that God was going to do. He's just, eh, kind of blah about it. Again, I, I think that led to just his dullness with God there. But, but after that, that little bit of coaching from, from Eli, God spoke to Samuel, and he heard it, and he heard that, that plan of judgment against Eli. And we know that for sure. That's, that's recorded here in Scripture. Uh, we don't know if God said anything else to Samuel uh, with that. And as I thought about it um, and, and processed this passage, I thought, you know, if, if I was God here in this, you know, I would, I would tell Samuel, oh, this is what I'm going to do, and then, you know, you're going to be the next, next priest, and that you're going you're gonna to do these great things, and I'd lay out my big old plan so, so Samuel knew what was coming. That's what I would have done. That's, that's my leadership style, but I don't know if God did that. Um, but we do know that this was the first of many times that God spoke to Samuel, though. Um, and it says there uh, very, at the very end uh, in, in verses 19 and 20, So Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to, Be to Beersheba, knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. So uh, Samuel, uh, again, this was the beginning of, of a longstanding, powerful relationship that he had with God, and that God used him to, to turn Israel back to himself. So my third point here is that God can speak and we can hear it. And so how do we hear God's voice? Uh, we hear it through the Bible. Um, there's five things we can go through here, five ways we can hear God's voice. So God can speak to us through his word. Um, and that's why we need to stay in it and we need to read it um, over and over again. You know, you can't just read the Bible once and have it mastered. Um, but God's word is living and active, as it, as it says in, in 1 Timothy, and that it speaks to us. And so if you've ever read your Bible, um, read a devotion book, and just be like, man, that, that's just, that's where I'm at right now. I really needed to hear that. It's probably God speaking to you right there then, right? <clears throat> and, and so we need to be faithful, again, in, in listening to that and, and, and giving God opportunities to speak to us. Um, by, by reading his word, by being in our Bibles. Uh, second thing is that God can speak to us through people. Uh, and, and a classic example of that is what I'm doing right now uh, in preaching and teaching. God can speak to us through, through people in preaching and teaching. Um, have you ever felt like you've been sitting here on Sunday morning and Pastor Scott is just preaching right to you and that he crafted his message and, and he knew exactly what he was going what you were going through, and he, he it, it's just speaking right to you. Yeah, I had that experience, uh, I don't know, four or five weeks ago with this. Um, and, and so God can use uh, preachers and teachers uh, to speak to us, you know, through through being here Sunday morning. Again, a, a plug for being a part of a, uh, being a part of church and being connected in church um, so that we, God can have the opportunity to speak to us um, through our pastors and through our teachers. You know, you have you have podcasts. Again, we have all this technology that we can we can use that's at our beck and call, and that we can we can listen to all kinds of people teaching. 
with that. Um, and so we can leverage that for, for good in our lives and not allow it to be a, a distraction to us. And then it doesn't necessarily have to come from Sunday morning pastor preaching or, or youth group or whatever. It, it can just be from regular people. You know, God can use other people, just regular people, just to speak to us, to encourage us, to comfort us, uh, to convict us. Again, I'm sure you've probably had a, an experience where someone's come up to you and told you something, and you're just like, man, I really need to hear that right now. Again, that could be God speaking to you through somebody else with that and, and speaking through that person. So uh, God can use people to speak to us. Uh, third, third thing is through circumstances. I personally don't believe in coincidences. Uh, God is God is the master about bringing about circumstances and coincidences to, to speak to us. I'm sure um, you've probably felt called to do something or go somewhere or speak to somebody, and maybe ah, I don't know, I don't know. But then, as as time moves on, as the day moves on or days move on, that that person, place, or thing keeps coming up, right? Just you see it on a billboard or you hear it in a song or somebody keeps talking about this person. Uh, and so, again, God can be speaking to us um, through, through circumstances and, and reminding us and calling us to those things, just like he, he called Samuel um, and, and spoke to him through that. Fourth thing is through the Holy Spirit. Um, so you can, you can kind of look at this one and, and name this one in different ways. You can call it God's still small voice. Um, you can call it God nudging you through your heart, through your mind. Uh, but God can speak to us again uh, through that still small voice, through the Holy Spirit, that, that I would say. And, um, you know, he, he uses those times. And so, again, I'm going to share a little bit, of, a little story. Um, and... Um, as many of you know, if you've been here for a while, um, we attended here for a long time, and about seven, eight years ago, God called me into ministry, and, and I felt that call, and I was, had no idea what that was going to look like, um, but I just, I just knew God called, called me into ministry. And so during that time, really seeking God and praying and, and being devoted to the scriptures, and it was really a rich time in, in my walk with, with God. And um, over over my devotion times in the morning, um, I, I felt felt led to try and contact uh, an old friend of mine. I uh, hadn't talked to him in ten years. He was like our small group leader, associate pastor, um, and and we had a, a pretty good little personal friendship when we were in college uh, with him. And ten years had passed, had not said a word to this guy, hadn't talked to him, and and so. Felt kind of God say that one morning, and then another morning, and then I think, you know, third time or whatever, but it was over a few days. I was like, well, I, I think I need to do this. So, again, been 10 years. I had no way to contact him. Uh, and so I, I was friends with his wife on Facebook, so I sent his wife a message, asked for his email address, and, and really my heart in it, uh, what I felt God calling me to do was to uh, just send him kind of an encouraging email. I felt like, well, maybe he was he was down and and just needed some encouragement. And so I wanted to share with him what God had done in my life in the last 10 years. Um, again, when he knew me, I was a, a young college student and just trying to figure out things in life with that. And, and here had, God had, had worked over these last 10 years with that. So I got his email address and, and sent him a, a quick email, kind of giving him a short summary of what God had done. And, and, and that's how God opened up the, the door for me to go into full-time ministry and to be... Uh, youth pastor for for three years down at the the church in southern Indiana was, was through that email and God set that up. I had no idea that that you know he was looking uh, that their church was looking for a a youth minister at the time and so God orchestrated that again through that still small voice as I was spending time with him and listening to him. So again, just just a story of how God can speak to us and and God can use those things um, in our life. And, and so the last thing, the fifth thing um, that God can speak to us through is through visions and dreams. God spoke to Joseph um, and, and warned of the coming famine and, and how, to, how to prepare for that um, in, in Genesis. 
God spoke to Daniel uh, through visions and dreams and, and gave him the ability to interpret those as well um, as he you know, gave the, also dreams to Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel interpreted that. Uh, the book of Revelation is, is kind of one big vision that was given to the Apostle John, and he was told to record it um, down for us. So not every dream and vision is from God, um, but it has been a tool that God has used um, in the past, and we have it recorded in Scripture with that. But, but the, again, the key thing with all these is, is having that relationship with God. Um, and, and, and again, having the wisdom and, and um, discernment to know that when that's God speaking, and as, as you grow that history, as you grow that experience, you can have more confidence and know that it's God speaking. You know, it says in John 10, 10, as, as Jesus is talking about, about the, uh, um, him being the good shepherd and his flock will know his voice. The sheep will know my voice. And so, again, that's a desire of, of God and, and of Jesus to speak to us and, so, and that we would know his voice. Um, but it all starts with a relationship with, with Christ. If you've never um, put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and repented of your sins, you have to do that first to be able to hear from God. And then use that, you know, as we continue to, to live that out and, and sin in our lives again, repent of those and, and clean that up as we go. But as I said, that sin damages our relationship with God. It separates us from God. And our sins cannot be removed by good deeds. We, we can't do more good than bad and, and just magically wipe off that sin debt that we have to God. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way if we break the law here on earth, and it doesn't work that way in God's kingdom as well. And so someone has to be punished for your sins. Someone has to pay the penalty, and Jesus didn't want that to be us. And so Jesus came and lived a sinless life, was the perfect sacrifice uh, for God, lived and died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins, and rose from the grave three days later. Uh, defeating death and defeating sin and offering us a restored relationship with God if we will put our faith and trust in him and his death, burial, and resurrection. And um, offers us eternal life uh, as well with that. And eternal life doesn't start when we die, but it starts that moment that we put our faith and trust in Christ and we can experience God's goodness and God's greatness and, and that restored relationship with him. So if you've never done that before, we'll give you an opportunity here in a few minutes uh, where you can do that. And if you have questions or, or uh, just want to talk more about that, I'd, I'd love to talk with you about that. Um, so, so feel free to, to come up to me and talk with me or, or reach out to me about that. But where do we go from here? As, as I wrap things up here and we come into our time of invitation here, uh, I want to challenge you to be listening uh, to God. Uh, and to, to do that, again, we must invest in our relationship with God. We, we must invite him to speak to us uh, and be faithful to listen. And so being faithful to listen means spending time in the, our Bible so that God has the opportunity to speak to us through there. Um, that means keeping our eyes open for what God is trying to say to us uh, through things around us, um, through, through people, um, and, and through our circumstances. That means having some quiet time with God and listening uh, as he talks to us through the Holy Spirit and through that still small voice, you know, not making our prayer time all about just us talking to God, but again, giving him a, a time to speak to us with that. Because we can't expect God to speak to us if we don't invest in our relationship with him. It doesn't work that way here on earth, right? We can't have a good relationship with our friends with our spouse, with our family members, if we don't spend time with them, if we don't talk to them, if we don't share our life with them. And so we have to share our life with God. We have to invest in our relationship with him and, and treat him like a real person with that. So I uh, just want to encourage you to do that. Again, pastors, um, going to be back next week, and we'll be sharing um, what, he's, what, he, what God's laid on his heart for, for us in 2021. And so... We want to be prepared for that. So I want to just encourage you, um, you know, as we come to invitation, you can come up to the altar and, and invite God to speak. Op open yourself up to that. Um, well, the altar will be open for that. Or, or set some, some, some time aside this week to do that as well and, uh, and be listening. And, uh, again, cultivate that ear for, for God.
So uh, let's let's pray. Father God, um, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that we can have a close, intimate relationship with you, Lord, and that you can speak to us. So Lord, I pray that we would open ourselves up to you, that we would be faithful to do those things, um, to, to allow you to give you an opportunity to speak to us. We pray, Lord, that, that our hearts and minds will be open to, to listen to you. And uh, we thank you, Lord, um, for your, your sacrifice for us. Um, and, and let us never forget that. Let us never lose sight of that and all that it cost you for us to be saved. It's in Jesus' name we pray.